How's it going guys? I hope you've all had an excellent week. Excuse my voice in the video, I'm a little under the weather today, but I wanted to get you guys the latest release of the PPI numbers that came out for November. Now, for those who don't know, the PPI is the producer price index, and that me measures the cost that producers or companies pay to purchase their supplies, as opposed to the consumer price index, which hits the pocket of the consumer. Now, with the PPI index coming out today, it came. there was an increase of 0.3%. Analysts were expecting an increase of 0.2%, and that is why the market sold off after the news. Now, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the numbers. We're going to see what exactly the average price that consumers are paying. We're going to see where numbers got better, where numbers got worse. And then we'll try and predict how that's going to play into the consumer price index, which is coming out next Tuesday. So with that being said, hit the like and subscribe, and let's jump into today's video. All right, boys and girls, we are on the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And as I said, the PPR came out today for the month of November with an increase of 0.3%. Analysts were expecting a 0.2% increase. The markets didn't like this. They sold off going into the opening here. So if we take a look at the PPI, and I actually have a nice graph brought up here, what the PPI is, the producer price index is for items that producers purchase, so raw materials, food, um, different machinery that they purchase that they will then use to produce their products and sell to consumers. These are the items that are made up here that make up the PPR. So you've got everything from rubber, plastics, uh, farm products, you've got textiles, fuels, machinery, and for the month of November, all these items in total increased by 0.3%. So if we take a look now at the PPR graph for November, the one area that really spiked from the month of October is food. Now, when we're talking about food here, we're talking about food coming directly from the farm to producers. So for example, a company like Cisco, let's say, they are a, a food producer They will purchase items from farms and then put that in their products and then sell that to businesses and to the, the end consumer eventually. And that was an increase of 3.3%, which offset the decrease of 3.3% uh, of energy costs. So in total, you can see right here, um, the 0.3%. Now, one thing to notice about this is that the trend is your friend. And I think this is what is promising going into this next Fed meeting. Um, while the number was higher than expected, if we take a look at January and we run it through the 12 month increases um, starting January 22, we can see that that did spike in March and then March, it, it started coming down, went up a little bit. And then the trend is your friend. Look at this year, nine, seven, eight, seven, eight, five, eight, one, and now seven, four. So yes, it did increase uh, slightly for the month more than expected. But in previous months, we can see this trend is coming down and this is this is good news, right? So while it's not completely uh, in the clear just yet, this is coming down. Now, how this is going to affect the consumer price index, which is set to come out next week, my guess is yes, there is still going to be increase in the consumer price index. But I am going to say that this, um, this is going to be the same reflection here and we are going to be cooling off. Now, the markets may not like the fact that if the number comes in higher than expected, the markets may lead to a sell off again. And then this will most definitely lead the Fed to make a decision to increase interest rates at their meeting on the 13th by 0.75% as opposed to 0.5%. But I, I think that the Fed already has the decision made based on the employment numbers that just came out. I think the Fed has already determined that they will be increasing interest rates by 0.75 percent because obviously people are still working and which means that people are still spending and so prices are going to continue to remain elevated inflation will remain elevated and if the fed wants to get back down to their two percent um, projected or their two percent ideal inflation people are going to have to start working now it sounds crazy to have an economy where people start getting laid off 
but unfortunately if if you want to tackle inflation people are going to have to stop working and it's we are starting to see layoffs tick up uh, there's a lot of companies now uh, especially larger tech companies where a lot of people were um, teleworking we're now starting to see that they are getting tighter on the uh, costs and they're starting to lay people off or at least have a hiring freeze where they're not laying people off at all now the housing market housing prices and housing demand is slowly coming down there are certain markets that are getting affected more than others um, but the demand is lower, uh, you know, interest rates still remain elevated and I don't see that changing till around spring of next year. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. But for the overall um, PPR that came out today, uh, things are, you know, a little bit higher than expected. But like I said, the trend is your friend. If we go ahead and look at the markets right now. So when the news dropped this morning, the uh, Dow uh, pre-market was down um i think it hit about down 200 dollars at one stage and so it has recovered a little bit here at um, down 79 dollars and if we take a look at crypto crypto was uh ethereum was trading around 190 this uh 1290 this morning and now it came back down a little bit so initially um had that shock in the markets but then things have slowly picked up again so guys that's all for today i just want to make sure i didn't miss anything um the PPR numbers coming out today again while these numbers are coming out the uh, media is saying you know we're heading into recessions um, it's doom and gloom layoffs coming housing's cooling down one thing stands for certain and that as I and I push it time and time again is looking for opportunities that we have been gifted because opportunities like this don't come around very often and just one thing that I'm I'm looking at doing right now, if we take a look at, say, for example, a company like this, I'm not sure if you've heard of this company, but if we take a look for the last year, for example, you know, let's do five years, so we can get a nice spread out here. And this company, a year and a half ago, you know, trading at $178 and now at $89. And I do think this could go lower. Um, so this is one of these companies that I'm watching. I'm dollar cost averaging into these guys because like I said, lifetime opportunities to make purchases like these, do your research, find companies that you like, companies that you enjoy, cryptos that you believe in. And if you have that extra money after doing your research and you feel like it's a good play, then you should go with your heart and make that purchase. So that has been the video for today, guys. I hope you got value out of it. I'm going to take a, a rest day today and um, and recover so I can be good to go uh, next week. I hope everyone is having an excellent week. I wish you all an excellent weekend. Um, remember to keep your head in the game. Look after each other. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Take care. Cheers.